Welcome to my first reading vlog in the new flat. I mean, it probably makes no difference to you as a viewer, <laughs> but for me, it's very exciting to film. So yes, I am here for a new reading vlog and it's actually a result of my, my move and my new flat and living situation because I was filling my book trolley here from my books in the boxes. I packed them all in from my mum's house. And I wanted to put books that were high priority, that I wanted to read in the next few months that I may just have forgotten about and didn't want to wait any longer for or have a specific reason or just think that they would suit the kind of stuff I'm looking for right now. Anyway, you know how you pick a TBR. So I was putting my TBR books on and my flatmate, Jill, my very good friend, asked if she could pick some of the books on my TBR. She said it would be fun to go through my book boxes and pick out books she thought I should read for one reason or another. Maybe because she'd read them or because she'd heard me talk about them or she was there when I bought them ages ago, whatever. But of course I said yes. And in fact, I said, here, pick a whole shelf. So I actually picked the top shelf and the bottom shelf of this TBR cart. But everything on this shelf here, Jill picked for me. So everything on this shelf, Jill put on my TBR. I obviously purchased them or sent them for review or given them as gifts but Jill picked them out from my books and suggested I read them so I put them on my TBR cart and last night I was looking for a new book to read so I picked one out of Jill's pile which was The Other Words, for, uh, not The, Just Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin and I was immediately drawn into this book. I've only read I think like six pages because I was very tired and just wanted to go to sleep. But you know when you do just read like two to ten pages of a book and gel with it, you immediately want to keep reading more? That's how I felt and I also felt a little bit resentful that I was so sleepy and couldn't carry on because the words were getting a little bit blurry. So I figure this is going to be the next book that I plough through. I'm going to read it tonight, I might have a nice relaxing bath in my new bathroom and enjoy my book chosen by Jill. And then I thought, hey, since I've started this, why not film a reading vlog where I read books that Jill picked for me? This one in particular is not one that Jill has read, but she picked it off of my TBR because she was there when I bought this. I bought this in Blackwells with Jill and it was quite a few years ago. In fact, I think it was the year this book came out, which was, I can inform you, 2019. It was 2019 I bought this book and I still haven't read it, so Jill felt that it was about time, which is absolutely fair. And I'm kind of glad that she did put on there, given how excited I am now to carry on with it. So yeah, I'm going to be reading this book and I figured whilst I was at it, I would read a couple more from Jill's selection. I do want to read them all in the coming months, but for this vlog, it's probably going to be around three, which is my typical um, number of books for a reading vlog. It's usually the number of books I can maintain the momentum of filming through. So I do have all of these books behind me. I won't go through every single one in detail, but I will show you a close up so you can get a look at everything. We've got some thrillers, some horror, some romance, some fantasy, some sci-fi, got some children's books. We've got some adults books. We've got some non-fiction books. I'm actually in quite a non-fiction mood at the moment. So Another Day in the Death of America by Gary Young, which is about gun crime in America, is pretty high at the top of my priority list. I don't feel like I'm being very articulate, but it's up there. And if I were to pull out a couple of other ones I thought I really wanted to get to, I would maybe say A Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson, which is a retelling of Dracula. Um, and it's meant to be queer and sapphic and dark and gruesome, which I love. So those sound really, really good. But I obviously may stray from those two and pick something else that Jill's popped on here. I do have this entire selection to pick from after all. So yeah, welcome to a new reading vlog, the first of my new flat, More where I read books that my flatmate chose for me. So I hope you enjoy and I hope I enjoy the books. See you in the next. evening I thought I would do a little update 
on my reading progress because I'm about 50 pages in to Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Marie Griffin and I'm really enjoying it. It's actually surprised me in a lot of ways because it's a lot more magical, mystical and paranormal than I was expecting it necessarily to be. The blurb is quite obtuse, um, it's quite a mysterious blurb, it doesn't give a lot away other than um, the basic setup of events and um, what you're getting yourself into and that there is a mystery surrounding it but you don't really realise I think going into it or at least I didn't that that mystery um, is fully paranormal like it's hinted at but it could have been one of those books you know where it's not actually paranormal it's more psychological and it's more in the head um it's always difficult but it seems quite explicitly fantastical from where I am so far it's about four characters really we have an older woman named Rita who lives in this big house in Ireland and she um, lives in this house with a teenage girl. So the teenage girl moved into this house with her mum and then her mum ran away and abandoned her. So it's basically now this teenage girl, Bevan, um, along with this older woman, Rita, who's giving her a home when Rita's niece and nephew, twin niece and nephew, who have just turned 14, come to stay with her for the summer because of um, their parents' like marital troubles. At least that's what um, is is implied. And it's all four of them now in the house and they all kind of have their own thoughts and stories going on. I mean, you don't hear Rita's perspective, or at least we haven't so far, but we do hear from Bevan and the two twins, May and Rossa. Um, so they all, you know, have their own priorities. They have their own understandings of what's going on. Bevan in particular has lived in this house for a long time and she was the one that first sort of introduced the paranormal aspects of the story, but they quickly became a part of May's as well. Um, at this point, Rossa hasn't really experienced anything that I have noticed. Um, and it's really, really interesting. I was a little bit worried when I realised that Bevan's perspective is told in second person, because I think second person is not an easy narrative style to pull off. That's how I am getting along with this book at the moment. I'm going to carry on reading it and I'll speak to you again when I've read a little bit more. Good morning. We're having a makeup free day, so here I am. And I have another update for you. I've only read about another like 10 or 15 pages of this. So like my thoughts are kind of the same, nothing has changed. But I did start Another Day in the Death of America and I started this on audiobook despite having the physical copy because I did that thing, you know, where you are about to cancel your Audible membership because I feel like I've got enough audiobooks at the moment. I don't need to buy any new ones. And when I was cancelling, they offered me a £10 credit. So I said, sure, give me the £10 credit. I'll spend it and then cancel. <laughs> um, should I be saying these things online? Like, will this never happen again now because I've said it out loud? But anyway, I got my £10 credit and I decided to get the audiobook of this because I do particularly like listening to non-fiction on audio. Like, I really enjoy listening to it. And that's not to say I won't read along with parts of it and make notes in this because that's what I also enjoy about physical copies of non-fiction. So, more often than not, I feel I get the best experience from a non-fiction if I have both the physical and the audio copy. It doesn't always work out, but in this instance it did. So, I did download it and I am now listening to it. I'm not super far in but it did remind me of the time I tried to start this book before and was in a really bad frame of mind and a really bad headspace and just started crying on like page two because <laughs> it's it's such an emotive topic. This book is all about children that die as a result of um, gun violence in the USA and this can be deaths that were accidental, deaths that were... Um, purposeful against the child, deaths that where the child was a bystander, lots of different incidents and in how these manifest and I, I've already forgotten but it's something but basically Gary Young takes one random day in America, a Saturday, and looks at all the children who died as a result of guns in the US on that specific day, which is 10 children. And this isn't an outlier. This is a very average day in the death of America. Like that is an average number. Some days are higher, some days are slightly lower, but he mentions that in the summer, it's often higher than that, whereas the day he's looking at is actually in the winter. So yeah, it's it's very emotional and very upsetting, um, but really well written so far. 
and I'm enjoying listening to it. The only thing I will say, and this is so besides the point, um, is that it is narrated by someone with an American accent, which I just find a little bit odd because the author, despite living in America, is British and has a British accent and he talks about being British and he talks about having a British accent and it's an American accent saying all of this so it's just a little bit like huh what to your ears it's disarming but it doesn't take away from the point of the book obviously it was just quite random when I heard that it was an interesting choice so yeah I am now listening to this and physically reading this and so far so good with both of them so very pleased that Jill put them on my TBR like I mentioned this one was because I hadn't read it and I bought it with Jill whereas this one is actually one that Jill had read and also thought was fantastic and that I would get a lot and learn a lot from reading so that's why she put this one on my TBR and I am very glad that she did but yeah I will continue reading and I will check in with you later. Everyone, I just thought I would update you on my reading. We're just chilling on my floor, my new favourite thing to do. Um, and I'm making progress on both of these books. I'm nearing the end of this one. I've got this much left to go, um, in other words, for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. And I'm really enjoying it. It's a really interesting book because I very much felt at the beginning that it was a horror book and I probably would have said, this is a horror novel. But then tonally, there's enough of a shift and sort of up and down of um what the tone is for me to say that maybe it's not a horror novel like I expect from a horror novel to feel kind of on tender hooks for most of the narrative whereas you you feel that in moments you feel moments of fear and um sort of creepiness <laughs> but it's not always there so it's dark and it maybe has like little elements of horror but it's definitely more of like a sort of paranormal coming of age miss novel and it also makes me wonder whether I would consider this YA or not because when I picked it up I picked it up as an adult book I think it is published as an adult book but it very much feels like it could be in the crossover between young adult and adult which brings you into the territory of discussing exactly what it is for a book to be young adult but aside from the simple requirement that any book has to be suitable for its age demographic, so a children's book has to be suitable for children, a young adult book has to be suitable for like teens and young adults, I think the reason that this kind of makes me think it would be enjoyed by young adults and teens is because it does deal a lot thematically with that period in your life, that sort of mid to late teens, um, young adulthood, where there's a lot of shared experiences among people in that age group to do with like growing up, changing, discovering oneself, sexuality. One of the characters in this book um, is a lesbian. So we have, like I mentioned before, our, our three main protagonists and the younger girl is um, exploring her sexuality and coming to terms with the fact that she's interested exclusively in other girls. And then we also have the fact that the twins are going through a lot of trouble at home. Their parents are in a deteriorating marriage and it's causing them a lot of strife and then there is the younger uh, older teen Bevan who's the one that's caught up in a lot of this paranormal stuff and she's being manipulated by this like creepy creature because she's 
otherwise kind of alone in this world and she wants to feel special and all of that strikes me as thematically stuff that is very very relevant to you when you are in your teens or a young adult it doesn't cease to be relevant when you're an adult but that's when it all starts to kick off and that's what a lot of these characters are going through which makes me think even if this isn't necessarily written as a YA book it would definitely be enjoyed by young adults so I am like I said approaching the end in that I've got about a quarter left and I would really like to push through this weekend i'm reading slow slowly at the moment i think i'm just very busy and up and down at the moment so it has taken me a little while to get through but it's very beautifully written and then we have another day in the death of america of which i have finished a chapter i'm midway through the second chapter and each chapter in this book deals with a different death due to gun violence in america on that same day as i described before so the first chapter was all about the youngest child death on that day which was of a nine-year-old boy who was shot by um his mother's ex-partner and the father of one of his half siblings and it was so upsetting and tragic like it is just naturally upsetting and tragic it's upsetting to read about death but there's something very very particular about reading um and hearing about the death of children it is very upsetting i like there's no other words for it and from somebody who's not from the us gun culture and gun crime and um just the sort of like social value of guns in the us is something that is quite strange to me and i think it's quite strange to people in a lot of countries outside of the us because it's not obviously the only country with um high numbers of gun deaths but it does seem to be something that is very like culturally ingrained and it's kind of hard to imagine that culture and that society from somebody who who isn't from there um like me who's from scotland and the uk and i think i remember first learning about um the high deaths due to gun violence in the us when i was around 12 because i watched the film bowling for columbine which is a documentary style film which is all about um what happened at Columbine High School and then it digs deeper into sort of gun culture in America and it was the first time I was confronted with these stats and the fact that there was such a effectively high chance of dying due to gun violence in the US. I never encountered that before it seemed so alien to me living in the UK and it's something that like I said I can't fully comprehend and there is so much research and um discussion that goes into this issue because it's not as simple as guns are legal in the US and that leads to gun violence because there are other countries where guns are legal and they don't have the same rates of gun violence. Um, I think that's why I'm referring it to more of a cultural issue and a societal issue and more to do with like attitudes around gun and gun ownership um, and this book touches on that but in a much more personal way because it is just about the incidence of individual deaths of children. It is not a book that is necessarily diving into the nitty gritty of statistics um, and attitudes to guns in America. Those are touched upon as a side narrative to the simple stories of these losses. Um, so in that respect, it's a much more like honed in look at gun culture in America through the lens of these um small number of deaths but given how they all happened on the one day and they are all of children it is not a small number and it is very upsetting and um eye-opening to read and for that reason I think I'm also reading it a little bit slower because I'm trying to comprehend everything that this book has inside of it but yeah it's really really well written again and I so far have really enjoyed both these books that Jill picked up for me so I'm really glad that she put them on my TBR and I'll give you another little update when I um, probably finish this and further into this.
morning. I just finished my second book. I mean, I didn't update you when I finished the other book, but I have just finished both books for this vlog. I'm still kind of waking up, showered, had my coffee, I'm ready to get to work now that I've finished my reading, but obviously I wanted to just like update you whilst I had a chance. So yeah, I literally just finished this this morning while I was having my morning coffee. Um, really beautifully written book. I'm not sure if there's much more I can add that I haven't talked about during this vlog in general, but the prose are really gorgeous. I would definitely check out more by this author. Um, it was quite like a mesmerising book. I wish I'd read it quicker. You know how sometimes you feel as though a book would have benefited or been ever so slightly better if you'd read it sort of in a couple of days or really intensely but I just have been struggling to find the time and the energy to read as much of late. I've been filming this vlog for two weeks which is longer than I would usually film a reading vlog and I typically try and read three books in a reading vlog but given that like I said two weeks have already passed and I've only managed two, I say only, that's fine. Um, I'm going to cut it off here and just review the two books that I have read and um, let you sit with uh, what I've read in this, this video. So yeah, I, I enjoyed this. It was really, really beautifully written. I also finished Another Day in the Death of America, which was an incredibly, incredibly upsetting book, but really good, like really emotive um, and such an interesting, evocative project for the journalist um, and writer to have chosen to do. I think it was quite a unique way to examine this phenomenon and um, give these, you know, well, victims of gun crime, whether accidental or intentional, their time and their voice. Um, I think sometimes the sort of individuals who are affected by things and whose lives are lost or forgotten amidst um, a lot of the other discussion around these things and I also thought it was really interesting because although it broadly wasn't necessarily about specifics of um, gun culture, it was more about these personal takes on it, um, it did touch on certain issues and this book came out a few years ago and like it would touch you know now and then on say like um, police sort of brutality or other issues um, around race and class and like the growing um, inequality and class divide in, in most countries, not just the US. And honestly, it's upsetting because that's all just gotten worse since this book came out. Like you read a book and when it comes out, you hope that these books and these discussions will lead to change. And they are leading to change and the fight goes on forever for change, doesn't it? But inequality has gotten substantially worse over the past few years um, and there has just been continued incidents as you know of police brutality and police killings and all of the other things that are touched on in this book have just carried on and I think that like added to how upsetting it was to read so yeah really good book but obviously sad um, and that is where I am at those are the books I've read I mean it's very satisfying to finish some books in the new flat those are the first two books I've read in the new flat which is really nice um, sort of beginning of my reading journey uh, this new portion of my life actually and I've just finished them before I turn 30 because my birthday is literally tomorrow the 23rd of March I will be turning 30 years old so those were the last two books I read in my in my 20s actually I never thought about it like that that's kind of cool right so those are the last two books I read of my 20s um I'm very excited to turn 30 tomorrow I have very good feelings about 30s like I've mentioned a million times already um and I've had a really nice time filming this vlog because I've also just had a really nice time the past two weeks settling into the flat. I got to go to the witch um, craft market in Leith with Ashley, Leanne and Jill. Um, I will link Leith Witchcraft Market's Instagram down below because they um, host them during most of the ma major like pagan festivals. 
and I also got to go and see my friend Tasmin in her first West End production um, which was of Cyrano de Bergerac so Cyrano de Bergerac was on in Glasgow for one week during um, its tour and is heading off to America next so if you're in New York, Brooklyn um, you can still book tickets to go and see it and like I said my wonderful friend Tasman is in that and James McAvoy plays the, the lead role of Cyrano de Bergerac it was such a phenomenal play I included a few clips of heading to the theatre but it was really incredible the writing oh, was impeccable like the the um dialogue and the poetry with which the characters spoke was insane and beautiful and I loved it and Tasman was fantastic and I'm so excited um to see the rest of her career develop so yeah it's been it's been a good two weeks but it's also been a tiring two weeks and I feel like I'm ready to settle back into normality after my birthday tomorrow so yeah that brings me to the end of this vlog. I will cease to ramble. I hope you have enjoyed it and enjoyed listening to me talk about these books. Always let me know what kind of reading vlogs you'd like to see in the future. I love hearing your ideas for reading vlogs and I will see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone.